Sales GAS model provides a framework for understanding our physiological response to stressful event. And it also provided us with one reasonable explanation for the relationship between stress and illness. But there are few experts who disagree with the GAS model, stating that it has a critical weakness of taking into consideration only the physiological aspects of dealing with stress and completely ignoring the cognitive or I would say the psychological aspect. So if you look at Saley's model, it basically talks about arousal of nervous system. Then in the resistance stages talks about the hormonal changes which takes place and then how it leads to illness and ultimately death. So it is no way taking consideration any of the psychological factors. So this model was highly criticized. Now, the way any human being would respond to any circumstances which he or she comes across, no matter whether the event is positive or negative. The response to these events is an interaction of a physical and psychological factor. That's why it is important to understand the nature and the nurture theory. So two of such experts who criticized the GAS model were Richard Lazarus and Susan Folkman. Now these two, they came up with their own theory, which was known as the cognitive appraisal theory of stress. Now this theory talks about a human being when they comes across a event, they perceive that event in two stages. One is the primary appraisal and second is the secondary appraisal. Now, to understand what their theory talks about or just to give you an overview about their theory, let me give you an example. Now suppose as your teacher, I enter into your class one day and I announce in the class that today we are going to have a surprise test and the marks of this test is going to add in your report card. Now there are approximately 40 students in my class. Now all these 40 students, they are in a same situation, in a similar situation. They all are perceiving a same situation. Now, but among those 40 students, not everyone will feel stressful, but there will be some individual differences in the reaction to this event. So some student might feel very confident after hearing me out. Or there will be few students who will be tensed and there will be few students who will be totally shocked after hearing me. Now, as a psychologist, I wanted to understand if all are facing a same situation, why there lies an individual differences. So the answer to this is the cognitive appraisal. Now, exactly what do you mean by cognitive appraisal? So it is nothing but our evaluation of a particular situation, which then leads to a reaction. So basically cognitive appraisal or appraisal in a very simple manner means that our reaction to any particular situation is dependent on how we perceive the situation. So if you perceive a situation positively, you will feel a positive emotion. But if you perceive a situation negatively, you will feel a negative reaction. So for example, if you score good marks, it's a positive event. So you will feel very positive about it and you will experience all sorts of positive reaction. That is increase in self-esteem, happiness, increase in self-efficacy, etc. But if you score good marks in your exam, now this is a positive situation, but those good marks were not as per your expectations. So even though the situation is positive, but you are perceiving that situation in a negative manner because it is not in line with your expectation, you might experience a negative effects or all the negative emotions. So this is what cognitive appraisal theory is about. It talks about how we perceive a situation dependent on how we react to it. Now to understand cognitive appraisal, Lazarus and Folkman gave a model of stress. So what is cognitive appraisal theory states? It states that an individual will feel stressful one, 
if he or she perceives that event as stressful that is the primary appraisal second if he or she does not have enough of resources to cope with the stress that is the secondary appraisal so the interpretation of the event is more important than the event itself now we will look at the model which lazarus and fopman gave so that you will be able to understand exactly what they are talking in their theory now please pay close attention to the model now suppose you come across a event okay an emotion provoking event now once a person comes across any event the person will first enter into a stage of primary appraisal okay now in primary appraisal there will be two reactions either the person will experience stress that is perceive the situation as stressful or the person will not perceive the situation as stressful so if the person is not perceiving the situation as stressful that is he being that he is being very positive about the situation then he will experience no stress but if the person is perceiving the situation as stressful okay and how he evaluates that the situation is stressful so he evaluates the situation as stressful based on these three factors so whether the situation is causing this event is causing any harm or loss whether this event is threatening one or whether this event is challenging his resources in any or in in some or the other ways so if he perceives this event this event as stressful based on these three factors then the person enters into a stage of secondary appraisal now in this stage of secondary appraisal the person basically evaluates his coping resources so if the person feels that he has adequate number of coping resources that he has enough of coping resources to cope with the stress then the person will experience no stress or he will experience you stress but if the person feels that his resources are inadequate then the person will experience stress or distress so i'll quickly summarize what we have studied over here i'll quickly summarize their model suppose there is a emotion provoking event which the person perceives now when he comes across a emotion provoking event the person will first enter into a stage of primary appraisal now here in primary appraisal the person will either perceive this event as stressful or he will be very positive about it that is he won't perceive that event as stressful so if he perceives as event as a not not the stressful one he will experience no stress but if a person perceives an event this event as stressful based on these three factors then the person enters into the stage of secondary appraisal now in secondary appraisal the person evaluates his coping resources or his coping mechanism so if he has enough of coping resources then he experiences no stress but on the other hand if he has not enough coping resources then he experiences stress or distress so this is the model which was given by lazarus and fokman the other name for this model is also a transactional model of stress now in order to test the cognitive appraisal theory there were there were some researchers who conducted an experiment so one of the researchers was tumaka and his colleague the research was conducted in 1993 so they wanted to study the participants physiological responses for example heart rate pulse rate etc while performing a mental task so they wanted to study how the participants reacts physiologically when they are assigned a mental task so what was the mental task the mental task was counting backwards from the number 2737 by 7 for example 2737 minus 7 is 2730 2730 minus 7 is 2723 2723 minus 7 is 2716 so like this 
the participant has to count number backward by the difference of seven. So this was the mental task given to the participants. Now, before assigning them the mental task, the researchers were interested in evaluating their primary and secondary appraisal. Now, how, now how did they evaluate? Simply by asking a question. So primary appraisal was evaluated by asking a question. How threatening do you expect the upcoming task to be? Now, remember, they were still not given the task. So this was before the task. So primary appraisal was assessed, like how threatening do you expect the upcoming task to be? And the secondary appraisal was evaluated by asking this question. How able are you to cope with this task? So this is how both the primary and the secondary appraisal were evaluated. Then the task was given to the participants after hearing the responses on these two questions. So participants who reported that the upcoming task would be a threatful were termed as threat group by the researcher. The participants who reported that the upcoming task is not so threatful and believe that they can cope up with the task were termed as challenge group. So these were the two groups. The participants were segregated into based on the responses of the two questions which were asked to them. So the results of the experiment stated that the participants in the threat group, they reported feeling greater stress while performing the task as compared to the challenge group where they felt less stress or no stress while performing the task because the threat group perceived the task as threatful before even assigning the task. That's why they reported feeling greater stress as compared to the challenge group. So this is how the experiment proved that the theory is going in line with the hypothesis.